Welcome to Telluman Insights, where we reveal the hidden forces that shape the way you live and show you how to use them to create real transformation and supercharge your health, mindset, and daily life. Here are your hosts, Emma Greenwood and Nathan Sinclair. Welcome back to Teal Lumen Insights. I'm Nathan Sinclair. And I'm Emma Greenwood. Today we're going deep on linguistic wave genetics. A field that really challenges how we think about DNA. Yes, it suggests that DNA is not just a fixed blueprint, but a dynamic system, almost like a language. Right. And that's where Peter Garyev comes in, a Russian scientist with some really groundbreaking theories. Okay, so let's start with the basics. What is Garyev's big idea here? Well, Garyev, he believed that DNA operates on two levels, the physical level with molecules and chemicals, and then an energetic wave-based level as well. So it's not just the chemicals in the DNA that matter, but also the energy and frequencies involved. Exactly. Think of it like a book. You've got the physical book with letters and words, but then you have the meaning and information conveyed by those words. Garyev argued that DNA is similar. I like that. That's a great analogy. It makes it much easier to grasp. But how did he even come up with this idea? Was this just out of the blue? Not really. Um, Garyev's work builds on previous scientists who explored biofields and electromagnetism in living organisms. So others kind of paved the way for his thinking. Absolutely. Like Hans Driesch, for example. He was a biologist who studied embryos and found that when you separate cells early on, they can still develop into a complete organism. Suggesting something beyond physical instructions is guiding the process. That's wild. It's like the cells still know how to become a whole being, even when they aren't physically connected. Exactly. And then there's Alexander Gervich. He proposed morphogenetic fields, these invisible blueprints that guide how cells and tissues develop. So these fields kind of act like an energetic framework that shapes the physical form of living things. Yeah, that's the idea. And then we have Harold Saxton Burr. He actually measured these bioelectric fields around living organisms showing that these fields aren't just theoretical, they actually have measurable properties. So all of these pioneers laid the groundwork for Garyev by showing that biology is not just chemicals and molecules. Precisely. Garyev took these concepts and applied them to DNA, calling it linguistic wave genetics. Linguistic wave genetics. Sounds intriguing, but also a bit intimidating. Can you break that down for us? Sure. So linguistic refers to Garyev's belief that DNA functions like a language you know, with its own grammar and syntax. And the wave part highlights that DNA communicates through waves, similar to how radio waves carry sound. DNA as a language, that is a pretty radical concept. It is. And Guryev didn't just speculate. He actually conducted experiments to support these claims. One of his most famous is the DNA phantom effect. The DNA phantom effect. That sounds a bit spooky. It does, doesn't it? But it's based on some solid scientific methodology. Garyev used lasers to study DNA, and what he found was that even after the DNA was removed, it left this energetic imprint that could still interact with the laser light. Wait, so you're saying even when the DNA was gone, it was still kind of there? In a way, yeah. It's like the DNA's energy lingered even though it wasn't physically present anymore. That's a remarkable finding. It really challenges our assumptions about how biological systems work. And what did Garyev make of this phantom DNA? He believed it was evidence that DNA communicates beyond just its physical structure, leading him to the wave genome theory, which suggests that we can actually reprogram DNA using frequencies like sound or light. So potentially we could heal or even create biological systems just using specific frequencies. That's the implication, though it's still very much a frontier area of research. I and you know, Garyev wasn't alone in finding evidence for this. Other researchers have also conducted experiments that support non-physical communication in biological systems. Give us some examples. What other experiments kind of back this up? Well, there's the phantom leaf effect. Researchers cut a piece of a leaf and then photographed it, and a faint image of the missing piece showed up as if the leaf's energy field remembered the original shape. The leaf's ghost limb. I love that. It sounds almost like science fiction, but if it's true, it's pretty mind-blowing. Right. And then you have the cytopathic mirror effect. Scientists found that stressed cells in one container could cause similar stress responses in healthy cells in a completely separate, sealed container. So the cells were communicating their distress, but not through any known biological pathway. Exactly. It suggests that there might be a deeper level of communication, possibly through energetic waves or fields. And I remember you mentioned the studies with embryos showing that they can influence each other's development even when separated. Yes. 
Researchers found that embryos, even when physically separated, can develop in a coordinated way, like they're aware of each other. It really seems like these experiments are showing that the traditional model of biological communication, you know, the one based solely on chemical signals, might be incomplete. Exactly. There might be this whole other level of communication that we're only beginning to understand. It makes me wonder, how do scientists even study these subtle energies and frequencies? What kind of tools are they using? That's where things get really interesting. Scientists are using all sorts of sophisticated techniques, like laser correlation spectroscopy and photon counting detectors to study these phenomena. They're even developing biofield detection systems to try and visualize the energy fields around living things. So we're not just talking about theoretical ideas here. Scientists are actively trying to measure and quantify these energies. Absolutely. And the more we learn, the more we realize just how complex and interconnected living systems really are. It sounds like we're on the verge of a whole new understanding of biology. <laughs> but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go back to Garyev. You mentioned he had a specific framework for his theory of linguistic wave genetics. Yes, he did. He outlined five key postulates that form the foundation of his entire perspective. They're crucial for understanding how he saw energy, information, and life itself all interacting. Okay, let's dive into those postulates and unpack his big ideas. So Garia's first postulate is that living organisms aren't just made of physical stuff. There's also what he called an energy informational substance, EI substance for short. So there's more to us than just our molecules and cells, like yeah. some kind of invisible energetic component. Exactly. Garia believed this EI substance is essential for all biological processes. Think of it like the software that runs the hardware of our bodies. Interesting. So what about the second postulate? His second postulate is that this EI substance is omnipresent. It exists everywhere at the same time. Omnipresent? You mean it's not limited by space and time as we understand them? That's the idea. So the distance between the EI substance of any two objects is essentially zero, no matter how far apart they are physically. Whoa, that's a big one. So even though we experience physical distance on this energy information level, everything's connected. Precisely. And that leads us to his third postulate. Garyev proposed that every living organism exists on two levels, the material level, the physical stuff we can see and touch, and the EI level, that energetic informational counterpart. So it's like our physical bodies are just the tip of the iceberg, and there's this vast, unseen energetic component that's just as important. Exactly. And here's the key. Garyev believed that the EI level actually drives the material level. It's the information and energy that shape and guide the physical processes. So our energy and information are kind of calling the shots. That's a pretty different view from what we usually think. It is. And this sets the stage for his fourth postulate, this reciprocal relationship between these two levels. A reciprocal. What does that mean exactly? It means that changes on one level, either the material or the EI, will affect the other. So if you change the energy or information, it can impact the physical body and vice versa. That makes me think about the mind-body connection in a whole new way. So what's Garyev's last postulate? His fifth postulate states that life itself is this constant exchange of energy and information between an organism and its EI counterpart. It's this flow of information that really makes something alive. Okay, I think I'm starting to get the picture. Yeah. But how does all of this connect to genetics and DNA? Well, for Garyev, it meant questioning a lot of what we thought we knew. For instance, he believed that what we call junk DNA isn't junk at all. So that non-coding DNA actually has a really important function. Absolutely. Garyev thought it's essential for this energy information system. It could contain instructions and codes for how our genes are expressed, not just physically, but also on an energetic level. I'm sensing a pattern here. Garyev is pushing for a much more holistic and interconnected view of biology. You got it. He saw life as this complex system where energy, information, and consciousness are all intertwined. And that brings us back to the linguistic part of his theory, that DNA is like a language. Okay, so how did he connect DNA to language? What's the evidence for that? Look, Variev pointed to things like codon homonyms. Now, codons are sequences of three DNA bases that code for specific amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. So codons are like the words in this DNA language. Exactly. And codon homonyms are different codons that code for the same amino acid, like synonyms in language, different words, same meaning. Garyev felt this pointed to a deeper meaning embedded in DNA. So there's more to the code than just the chemical sequence. There's meaning that goes beyond the structure. 
That's what Gurayev proposed. He also believed that DNA could emit high-frequency waveforms, almost like it's sending out signals, communicating information. DNA is a broadcaster. That's a pretty wild concept. I know, right? And some research suggests that DNA sequences even have patterns similar to grammar and syntax, just like in human language. Wow, it's like DNA is speaking its own language, and we're just starting to figure it out. It's a lot to take in. It is. But it gets even more mind-blowing when you start to consider the role of consciousness. Oh, yeah. We can't forget about that. Gary F. didn't shy away from exploring the connection between consciousness and DNA. Not at all. In fact, he believed that our consciousness could actually interact with our DNA. Hold on. Are you saying that our thoughts and intentions could actually affect our genes? That was Guryev's idea. He even did experiments where he claimed to regenerate damaged tissues in rats, just using electromagnetic fields that carried certain genetic information. So he was basically doing distant healing, but on a genetic level. That's incredible. It is. And it kind of lines up with the work of researchers like Dean Radin, who has studied how consciousness can influence physical systems. Radin's experiments suggest our thoughts and intentions can actually have measurable effects. So maybe the mind-body connection is even deeper than we ever imagined. It's possible. And Garia believed that connection happens through these wave-based interactions between consciousness and DNA. He suggested that DNA isn't just passively receiving information, but also transmitting it, sending out signals that our thoughts and intentions can influence. Okay, my mind is officially blown. If even a little bit of this is true, it has huge implications for how we understand ourselves and the universe. Absolutely. Garyab's work, if it's proven right, could revolutionize medicine, agriculture, even biocomputing. Imagine if we could tap into this wave-based communication, we could potentially heal ourselves, grow crops in new ways, even create completely new kinds of technology. This is also fascinating, but I have to ask, if this is so groundbreaking, why isn't wave genetics more mainstream? Why is it still so controversial? Well, it's important to remember that Garyev's work is still very much on the cutting edge of science. It challenges a lot of established ideas, and some scientists are skeptical. Plus, replicating Garyev's experiments has been difficult. Some researchers haven't been able to get the same results, which raises questions. So there's still a lot of work to be done to really verify and validate these findings. Absolutely. But even if some of Garyev's more uh, radical claims don't hold up, his work has definitely sparked some really important conversations and opened up whole new areas of research. I think it's fascinating how he connected wave genetics to other theories, like the holographic brain theory and quantum mind theory. It suggests that these ideas aren't just isolated, they're part of a bigger shift in how we understand the universe. I totally agree. There's this growing recognition that consciousness is involved in shaping reality, and wave genetics fits right into that. It challenges that traditional materialistic worldview and opens up a whole new way of thinking about how life and consciousness are connected. All right, let's shift gears for a second and talk about the practical applications of wave genetics. Where could this research lead us in real world terms? Okay, let's start with medicine. Imagine treating diseases by reprogramming DNA with frequencies. Instead of using drugs or surgery, we could use sound or light waves to heal. That sounds like something straight out of Star Trek. Yeah. But tell me more about these potential applications. Where could wave genetics really make a difference? Well, medicine is the most obvious one. If we can target specific genes with frequencies, we could potentially treat genetic disorders, regenerate damaged tissues, even slow down aging. So instead of using drugs or surgery, we could use sound or light waves to heal. That's the idea. And it's not just about treating existing conditions. Wave genetics could also be used for preventative health care, optimizing gene expression, and strengthening our natural resilience. Okay, that's pretty amazing. What about agriculture? How could wave genetics impact that field? Imagine being able to increase crop yields, mm. create drought-resistant plants, or even bring back extinct species using wave-based genetic information transfer. Garyev's team claimed to have revived ancient seeds using this technology. Wait, really? They brought seeds back to life after thousands of years. That's what they claimed. Of course, those findings need further verification, but the potential is there. That's incredible. It's like something out of Jurassic Park, but with plants. Exactly. And then there's biocomputing. If DNA really does function like a biocomputer, as Gary have suggested, we could use it to store massive amounts of information and perform complex calculations. So we could have DNA-based computers. It's a possibility. DNA is incredibly dense when it comes to information storage. Just one gram of DNA could theoretically hold more data than all the digital storage devices in the world combined. Wow, that's mind-boggling. 
If wave genetics really takes off, it could revolutionize so many aspects of our lives, but it also raises some big questions, doesn't it? It does. We've been talking about the potential benefits, but there are also potential risks and ethical challenges that we need to think about carefully. That's a great point. Yeah. We'll need to have some serious conversations about the ethical implications of this technology as it develops. But for now, let's delve into some of the other theories that connect with Garyav's work. Right. These connections really highlight how wave genetics is part of a larger shift in how we understand consciousness and reality. So let's dive into some of these theories in more detail. We've already touched on Carl Pribram's holographic brain theory. You know, the idea that memories are stored non-locally throughout the brain. Right. Like each part of the brain contains the whole memory, just like a small piece of a hologram can recreate the entire image. And that aligns with Garyev's idea that genetic information isn't just in the DNA molecule but also exists in a non-local field. Exactly. It suggests that information isn't limited to specific physical locations, but exists in a more holistic and interconnected way. So we're talking about a completely new way of understanding information itself. Absolutely. And this concept of non-local information is further supported by David Bohm's theory of the implicate order. Okay, now we're getting into some deep philosophical territory. Can you break down Bohm's theory for us? Well, Bohm proposed that there's a deeper level of reality called the implicate order, where everything is interconnected and interwoven. So it's like a hidden dimension where everything is unified and inseparable. That's a good way to put it. And what we see as separate objects and events in the physical world, what Bohm called the explicate order, are just manifestations of this deeper unity. So Garyev's idea that DNA communicates through wave-based interactions, that would fit into this concept of an underlying interconnectedness. Precisely. It suggests that genetic information is part of this larger web of interconnectedness and that consciousness plays a role in shaping this reality. Makes you wonder if those experiments where cells seem to communicate across distances were actually tapping into this implicate order. It's a fascinating possibility, and this brings us to another intriguing theory that aligns with Garyev's work, Henry Stapp's quantum mind theory. Okay, remind us what Stapp's theory is all about. So Stapp, a theoretical physicist, argues that consciousness plays an active role in shaping reality at the quantum level. He believes that consciousness collapses the wave function, you know, that probabilistic state of a quantum system, and creates a definite outcome. So our consciousness is actually influencing the fabric of reality. That's a pretty mind-blowing concept. It is, and it aligns with Garyev's view that DNA can be influenced by conscious intent. They both see a two-way street between mind and matter, where consciousness isn't just a passive observer, but an active participant in shaping the world. So we're not just victims of our genes. We actually have the power to influence them with our thoughts and intentions. That's the suggestion. And it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities for healing and self-transformation. It's incredible to think that our consciousness could have such a profound impact on our biology. This has been an incredible deep dive into the world of linguistic wave genetics. It's challenged my thinking and opened up a whole new perspective on life, consciousness, and the universe. It's been a fascinating journey for me, too. It's amazing to see how these different theories, from quantum physics to consciousness studies, are starting to converge and paint a new picture of reality. And for our listeners who are eager to learn more, I encourage you to explore the work of Peter Garyev, Stuart Hamroff, Roger Penrose, Carl Pribram, David Bohm, Henry Stapp, Dean Radin, and Bernardo Castrop. They've all made profound contributions to our understanding of consciousness and its relationship to the physical world. Yes, their work offers a glimpse into a new paradigm, one where consciousness is no longer seen as just a byproduct of matter, but as a fundamental force in the universe. So if our DNA is more than just a blueprint, if it's a dynamic system of information exchange that's influenced by our consciousness, what does that mean for our understanding of life itself? That's something for all of us to ponder. Tail Lumen Insights helps you get to the heart of complex topics like this one. Subscribe for more mind-expanding explorations. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep expanding your horizons.